I started doing a repair and then thought, hey, I should be recording this because it might be useful for other people as well. And my uh, brother's key fob uh, started playing up in the van. It's, uh, it wasn't working. So I put a new batch in it, checked out, looks fine. I've already changed the buttons in that one because uh, the buttons are very prone to failing in the old Ford key fobs, particularly when they're getting this old. And I also got another key fob, which uh, was just a, a redundant key fob, and it had been damaged slightly. Someone had drilled a hole through the case so they could put a new key ring through, and they drilled a hole through the circuit board, so there's a little divot outside the circuit board here. So what I'm doing is I'm changing the buttons, because the buttons are very, you know, they tend to fail uh, quite routinely. And uh, I'm also putting the third button in that opens the boot. Well, the boot in this case, it's, it shows that the picture of the boot in the key fob when it's not worn off, but it actually opens the back door of the van. And the switches I'm using are these tiny little surface mount switches that you can easily get off eBay in bulk packets. So they're uh, very easy to get. They're cheap. They're only pennies each. Uh, and they go by a sort of, they go by dimension, the millimetre size. So um, I'm going to take this one off now and put a new switch on. So I'll show you how it's done. Let's, uh, well, let's uh, show the tools. Flux. Desoldering wick. Pair of... Snips to cut off, already flooded soldering wick. A pair of tweezers, I don't normally use such delicate tools. Some standard lead-based solder. And a pair of long-nose pliers just to provide extra grip to lift the end of this uh, switch up when I'm actually desoldering it. If you notice a slight sweat appear in the hands, it's because it's roasting hot today. It's way too hot. Not my type of temperature at all. Let's uh, start the task. Let's uh, get this in and concentrate on this switch here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to retin the connections in that switch so we can lift it up. So get the solder around at an awkward angle here and just uh, throw a bit of fresh solder on. The older solder tends to get a bit dry and it just uh, makes it easier if you reflow a bit of fresh solder on before uh, attempting to desolder anything. So now I've done that, I'm going to apply, I'm going to grip the switch and apply, I'm going to try effectively hinging it up while alternating the solder iron between the two solder joints at this side, which will hopefully uh, release it. So I'm going to start alternating now while hinging it. It's lifting up, make sure it is completely up so uh, there's no uh, solder bridges under there to keep a hold of that because uh, that's it, it's completely clear. And now I'm going to get the solder iron. Ugh. And I'm going to uh, grip this with the tweezers and just gently so desolder the other sides. And again, you may have to alternate between the two of them. And that's it off. That is a bit grubby under there. That is manky under there. I shall give that a clean up, but first of all, I'm going to remove the excess solder in that. I'm going to do that by pretty much flooding it with flux. I'm going to do all Louis Rossman style and get flux everywhere. I think that's uh, largely because when you're zoomed up so close as you are in uh, his videos, it just looks like there's tons of flux. I think it's just a wee tiny drop he puts on, but it just looks like a massive quantity. Or it might be a massive quantity. Only Louis knows the answer to that. Uh, I'm just going to pause my turn and get a cleaning swab. I'm going to try and clean that. Yeah, a little bit of isopropanol has cleaned that up. It was really manky under there. It's you can There's corrosion underneath the actual tracks. This may not work, but you know what? There's no harm in trying it out. We can see what happens. Right, so I'm going to put a new switch on there now. And to do that, I'm going to get the old one out of the way before I end up re-soldering the, new, the old one back on. It can go in the bin. And I've got a new one, and I'm going to uh, put a tiny drop of solder on one pin. Just a little tiny quantity, it's just to hold it in place momentarily. Then I'm going to get my tweezers and the new switch. I'm going to line it up like this and just Tack that in, roughly. It doesn't have to be too accurate, because the switches, the rubber switches, uh, have a fair amount of play in them, but let's try and get it roughly lined up. The more you tweak it, the more likely you are to push it out of the position you want, but that's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good indeed. 
It could probably have gone marginally down close to the end. Will I do that? Yes, I will. I'll just keep doing exactly what I've said and tweak it until it's no longer in a good position. There we go. Such fine, delicate work. Then I'll solder one at the opposite corner. And then solder all the others, including the original one with some fresh solder, just to make sure it does flow, though that is just an anchoring pad. Splendid, that switch is now in position. Now I want to put one where the uh, blank space is here. This camera is starting to stutter. This has been happening. Not, I don't know if it's just the temperature, but the actual screen is freezing quite a lot. And I think this is partly due to the most recent upgrade for Moto G4. I wonder if uh, Lenovo are uh, trying to put the knife into, uh, into the Len Lenovo G4. The Moto G4. Well, it is a Lenovo. That's annoying. That's very annoying. If they're killing off their product in the hope that I'll go and buy another one. Time to look at other buying options for cameras. So let's uh, clean these pads off. Mop up all that solder. Give that a quick clean. Now, where is my little extra switch and my tweezers? Okay, right, I've got a feel for where I want it. Let's put a tiny dab of solder here. Yeah, hopefully that's not affecting the video quality. It really is starting to stutter now. I may actually just reload this phone from scratch. Sometimes you have to do that. At least it's not that hard. It does involve reloading all the software and apps that you used. That switch isn't perfectly aligned, but you know what? It's okay. The screen isn't updating at all. I don't even know if this is recording anywhere. That's that's terrible. I really must remember, this is what killed... I used to record on an uh, iPad, an iPad 2, and Apple absolutely destroyed the iPad 2 with updates. I can't help feeling that maybe that was deliberate. Hey, it's time to buy a new... Uh, a new product, so let's uh, render your existing one unusable. And that is it. That is it soldered together. So now I'm going to uh, pop it into a case, take it over to my brother's, and check that out. So uh, that looks like a good result to me. The switches are clicking reassuringly. So, uh, yep, that looks like a good result.